class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the San Jose Sharks goaltending situation. There have been many moves made by Mike Greer this offseason, and many that I have criticized. Uh, the Luke Cunning trade, the signing of Matt Benning, the signing of Luke Cunning. But one set of moves that I haven't necessarily talk about, talked about a ton was the San Jose Sharks specifically targeting goaltenders over this these past couple of weeks. In fact, this is kind of one of the main things that the Sharks have done that has made sort of national news around the league, and it's kind of been a a joke around the league, I would say, where the San Jose Sharks are collecting all of the goaltenders for whatever reason. That is indeed the case here. But the thing, of course, when it comes to goaltenders is that while with forwards you can dress 12 forwards per game with goaltenders you can only dress two of them and only one of them actually gets to play unless of course one gets pulled and so having this many goaltenders is kind of going is kind of going to create a log jam And where that really stands out is, of course, at the NHL level, where the Sharks are left with three NHL-capable goaltenders, James Reimer, Aiden Hill, and Capo Kaknin. And I've mentioned multiple times during these past few videos in this offseason that the Sharks need to be trading one of these goaltenders prior to the season start. And with the recent signing of Capo Kaknin to that two-year, $2.7 million per year contract, that has become even more imperative because now the Sharks are left with very, very little cap space, and they still need to sign Mario Ferraro and so the easiest way to clear that cap space up would be to trade one of these goaltenders now the question of course becomes which of these would you like to move on from I've seen some people say Aiden Hill but I feel like that's going to be a bit more difficult Hill is younger has not necessarily proven to be a consistent starter or even backup at the NHL level and of course was injured for much of last season which is kind of worrying compare that to a player or a goaltender like James Reimer who played much of this past season didn't deal with a ton of injury issues had a good amount of games showed that he can definitely be a 1b or potentially even 1a type of starter and was also above average on a not so great nhl team so if i was a team looking at the san jose sharks and i was deciding which of these three goaltenders i wanted to trade for especially since reimer also has the one year deal I would specifically be targeting him. Now, of course, earlier in the offseason, it would have been much easier to move on from goaltenders as there were a lot of teams looking for help. For instance, the Toronto Maple Leafs seem to be completely scrambling to try and find a goaltending duo, not just one player, but an entire duo of players. And they've since picked up Matt Murray from the Senators and they've signed Ilya Samsonov, so they're no longer an option. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't still teams potentially looking to shore up their goaltendings. One, I could think of in particular would be the Minnesota Wild. They were running with a tandem of Cam Talbot and Cap Okakinen this past uh, season uh, for them. And then at the trade deadline, they ended up picking up Marc-Andre Fleury from the Chicago Blackhawks. And since you don't usually want to have three NHL goaltenders, which is a lesson that the San Jose Sharks are going to be learning at the moment, they ended up trading Kakinen to San Jose. However, during this past offseason, during these past couple of weeks, the Wild have traded Cam Talbot and brought over Philip Gustafson, a goaltender from the Ottawa Senators. And so their tandem is now looking like Fleury and Gustafson, which on the outside doesn't look terrible, but Fleury is 37 years old. Who knows if he's going to still be a very capable starter in the NHL. And considering Minnesota wants to be a competitive team, that's kind of something they need to have. And the thing is, is that Gustafson is not really the most reliable goaltender to fall back on. His stats this past season were dreadful. And so if I'm Bill Guerin, the Minnesota Wild GM, I'm likely looking for some goaltending help. And James Reimer, I wouldn't really have to look much further than him. The same would go for a team, let's say, like the Dallas Stars, with Ottinger really having emerged as a very strong starter for them, probably the best goaltender in the first round of this past playoffs, even though the Stars did lose in seven games to the Calgary Flames. Their backup besides Ottinger is Scott Wedgwood, who again is not necessarily super reliable as some sort of backup if Ottinger were to falter somewhat this upcoming season, which is not unheard of considering he is still rather young. And so maybe I would look to pick up James Reimer to shore up that goaltending tandem. So I don't think it would be super difficult to move him. It just depends on exactly what the Sharks are looking for in terms of value. What can they get back? Well, we could take a look at an earlier trade, those in 
slightly different circumstances with the Alexander Georgiev trade that happened a few weeks ago, going from New York Rangers to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for a third and fifth round pick in the 2022 draft, as well as a third round pick in the 2023 draft. Now, the reason I say these circumstances are definitely different is because Georgiev is significantly younger than Reimer. Reimer would likely be moving to a team for just a single year and then enjoying the free agency unless they really liked him and want to re-sign him he'd likely move on to some different team while Georgiev was specifically picked up by the Avalanche to sign a at least semi-long-term deal to be a goaltender in their system for the next few years because he is significantly younger and so when it comes to Reimer I will say that he did have a much better season than Georgiev, which does help bring some of that value back. So I imagine he can get something similar in terms of value uh, in return. I imagine something like a third round pick at the minimum for this upcoming draft and potentially with a team desperate enough they can even pull out a second round pick which is actually very very good this 2023 upcoming draft is expected to be very deep very strong akin to like the 2015 or potentially even the 2003 draft from many years ago so even a second round pick from a playoff team that ends up being like 57th or 58th overall you never know maybe that does pan out to be an effective player so Definitely, I feel as though Reimer is the most likely of the three goaltenders to be traded, and the Sharks might actually be able to get some pretty decent value back. When it comes to the AHL set of goaltenders, uh, there was this was something that was kind of a priority for Mike Greer and his staff, not just goaltending-wise, but general for the San Jose Barracuda, because if you thought the San Jose Sharks were bad this past season... The Barracuda were a completely different beast. The Sharks came 11th last in the league, not very good. The Barracuda were dead last in the AHL. They were so bad that they ended the season on a 15-game losing streak. And the thing is, is that that was an uncapped losing streak because the only reason it didn't continue is because the season literally didn't have any more games. For all we know, that could have continued to 16, 17, 18... 20 games plus you never know the Barracuda just were not very good this past season at all and that was a forward issue yes a defense issue yes but also a goaltending issue Sawchenko didn't have good stats here Amon didn't have good stats here these starter I guess at the start of the season Milnashuk who is no longer with the San Jose Sharks did not have good stats and when I say not good stats I mean really really bad stats like above 4.0 goals against average and things like that like it was absolutely dreadful so Mike Greer made moves to try and bring in basically an entirely new goaltending core to the San Jose Barracuda. The first one would be the player pick or one of the players picked up in the Brent Burns trade from the Hurricanes, Mack and Yemi, a goaltender who played about a dozen games with the Chicago Wolves this past season and was very, very strong. But of course, the Chicago Wolves were also a very good AHL team and Mack and Yemi is likely to be playing behind a significantly worse AHL team this season. So we'll see if his stats can sort of follow, but he seems to be the guy that the Sharks would be looking for to be the starter for the Barracuda for this upcoming season because of those strong stats. Stats. Another goaltender who could potentially fill in sort of a 1A, 1B role with McAniemi would be Strauss Mann, who is coming over to the Barracuda. Probably one of the best names in the in hockey at this point. I mean, it sounds like it's just one last name, Strauss Mann, but it, his first name is Strauss. His last name is Mann with two N's, so that's certainly interesting. He had a pretty decent season in Sweden overseas this past year. He'll likely be coming to San Jose for this upcoming season to play with the Barracuda, like I said. Now, one of the signings by Mike Greer that I didn't really enjoy was indeed this Aaron Dell signing. I mean, Dell, I understand the logic where you want to bring in sort of a veteran presence at the AHL level just in case. But the thing is that if Dell were actually pretty good at the AHL level, I definitely understand this, but he isn't really. His past couple of seasons at the NHL level were completely awful, like an above four goals against average, which is just terrible 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 and this isn't just in like a single game and like one fill-in game this was in over a dozen games I believe and so generally not a very good look for Aaron Dell and then when he was sent down to the AHL the stats obviously did improve against the much weaker competition but not by that much and so they still weren't particularly good so I don't necessarily 
enjoy the Dell signing, but it's certainly not the end of the world either, since it, of course, is just minor league based. And then when it comes to Zach Amo, he played a few games with the Barracuda last season, was not very good, ended up getting demoted to the ECHL, was not very good there either. Basically, the only reason he didn't go the same way as Zach Sachenko is because he had the one extra year on his deal. I imagine unless something crazy happens over this upcoming season, that he won't be with the San Jose Sharks organization past this year. And finally, moving on to the unsigned goaltenders. Uh, this, these are the players who, of course, do not yet have a contract. Maybe they'll sign at some point during this upcoming offseason, but I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. And so we won't necessarily see them with San Jose Sharks organization this upcoming year, but they're still, of course, under the umbrella of the Sharks. Uh, the first would be Mason Bopit, who was drafted this past draft in, I believe it was the fourth round. So obviously, he probably wasn't going to sign at any point. We'll see how he continues to develop at the junior level. The next would be Magnus Krona, who was brought over from the Tampa Bay Lightning a couple of years ago. He just won a championship with Denver in the NCAA. In fact, it was actually over Thomas Bordelow and the University of Michigan. So Krona seems to be heading into that final year in college, which is a bit dangerous for college players. Of course, a college player, when they finish their senior year, they can then wait to August 15th of that year, if I'm not mistaken, and then be just become generally an unrestricted free agent and sign with literally any team that they want. So the Sharks would actually lose his rights at that point. So if they're actually focused on trying to get Krona into the San Jose Sharks organization, they're likely trying to, you know, keep a communication line open with him to see if they can iron out some sort of deal at the end of his next college season. And then finally, there is Benjamin Goodrow, who is probably the most hopeful of these three unsigned goaltenders, I would say, uh, was drafted in the third round a couple of years ago, was said to be potentially the third best goaltender in that year's draft, though well behind the two major top dogs there of Sebastian Kosa and Jesper Wallstedt. He had an okay season in the OHL this past season. Compared to forwards, of course, when it comes to goaltenders, their stats are deflated, where forward stats are usually inflated. You see like a 20-year-old at the OHL level put up like 80 or 90 points, and you say, eh, who really cares? But if you see a goaltender actually put up very good stats at the OHL level you say wow is that guy on like the best team in the league or is he just insanely good so even though Goodrow's stats were obviously not very good on paper it's kind of hard to judge him too hard because at junior level nobody wants to play defense everyone wants to look good for the scouts in the audience and he, it's bit more difficult to do that when you're like that third man back in the defensive zone compared to if you're putting up like a hat trick every other game so Goodrow not given much help, but definitely haven't given up any hope on him at all, not even close to that point. I imagine he'll still have a good three years before we really see where he fits into the Sharks organization. But that will do it for this look at the Sharks goaltending situation. Like I said, Mike Greer made multiple moves to pick up a lot of goaltenders, or at least a few goaltenders. It was a bit of a running joke, but we'll see if it ends up panning out. The major thing that we should be looking out for over these next couple of months is which one of these goaltenders ends up getting moves. I imagine it will be Ryan but you never know. Class dismissed.